Alright, so welcome back to another lesson of our class, where we will discuss about the types of prompts there are in ChatGPT. I mean, um, you can divide the prompts into a lot of types, uh, they're very different, um, and you can go ahead and have like a hundred types of prompts, but we won't do that in this lesson. We will look at the main categories of prompts there are in ChatGPT. And not only, I mean, in all chatbot applications and generally, what are the biggest types of prompts? So let's go ahead. So um, basically, we'll cover, uh, as I said, the types of prompts in writing. And the main ones will be open-ended prompts and closed-ended prompts, which are sub-types of the biggest types of prompts. So if I can say that, um, and the biggest types of prompts are simple and complex. So prompts mainly divide into two categories simple and complex and then simple prompts divide into simple and closed ended or simple and open ended and the same goes for complex prompts complex prompts divide into complex and open ended or complex and closed ended and we will also discuss how to use each type of prompt effectively for this part of the course where we will go a bit further into prompt engineering because this course can be separated into two main parts the first one will be prompt engineering and how you can use um, this uh, information i'm giving you to craft better prompts in any case scenario because i might give you some examples uh, of actual prompts and you can use them i mean yeah of course you can do that but i mean for what good if you will not be able uh, to craft your own prompts effectively. So we will focus in this part of the course on how you can craft really great prompts. And only after that we will go uh, even further and see some um, real life uh, examples of how you can use prompts. Anyway, we will identify the purpose of each prompt type uh, and we will also analyze the effectiveness of prompts and we will do that um, in this section, all right? Uh, now, the first category of prompts is the simple prompts, are the simple prompts. So simple prompts are just like, just what you might think. They're what they're called like. They're simple. They don't have many details. They're quite to the subject, they, I mean, that's the thing, they don't have details. Easy to remember, easy to understand. And now they divide into open-ended prompts and closed-ended prompts. And then there is leading prompts, which are actually something else, a bit separate, uh, uh, which we will discuss a bit later. Uh, you can see them as a different category, I will tell you why in a bit. Um, so, open-ended prompts are questions that give ChatGPT creative freedom. What does it mean? Well, it means that the question, and not only the question, because when we talk about open-ended prompts, we mean questions that are uh, that don't have a specific answer and that can allow for creative responses. But when, you're, when we're talking about prompts in general, it can be not, not only a question, it can be any 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 prompt you might have and that doesn't require a yes or no or a factual response if it doesn't require that then it might i mean it mostly it most likely it's an open prompt open edit prompt uh so for example you can type in ChatGPT, can you write me a story about a rabbit that goes into space uh it's open-ended or um can you tell me something interesting I might not know? So this is also an open-ended prompt. It gives ChatGPT the full creative uh, freedom. Moving on, we have closed-ended prompts. Uh, closed-ended prompts are basically prompts that, uh, or questions, in our case, they're prompts. You can think of them as questions that have a specific answer. So they don't give ChatGPT as much freedom in terms of creativity, if, for example, you ask ChatGPT, um, is, this, is the Earth flat? ChatGPT will answer, the Earth is not flat. The Earth is round. 
uh, and you cannot argue with, I mean, you can argue with ChatGPT and ChatGPT will all actually um, accept, I mean, it actually adapts to your thinking. Uh, we'll not go a lot deeper into that, um, but you, you get the point. A closed edit prompt doesn't give ChatGPT much creative freedom because it will answer with uh, yes, no, uh, or maybe it will answer with uh, the fact. And of course, after that, it will go even deeper and explain the concept you're talking about, but it's still a closed edit prompt because it didn't give ChatGPT lots of creative freedom uh, so that uh, the outcome is quite predictable. And then there are leading prompts, which, as I told you, are something different because they can be oftentimes um, confused and they are confused and they're quite the same thing as complex prompts. Leading prompts basically are simple prompts uh, that have a few details which might lead the prompt towards a desired outcome. But this is actually what complex prompts are. So if let's say you have a simple prompt but you also have one detail or two in the prompt, you can consider it a simple and leading prompt but if you have lots of details, such as the topic, the information about yourself and all that kind of stuff, you can consider, you can consider the prompt a complex prompt. So this is it. This is a wrap up with the simple prompts. You have open ended, closed ended. And I mean, uh, you can remember only these two. This is a separate case, but I mean, it's up to you uh, whether you consider simple and leading prompts in the same category or you consider leading prompts as part of complex prompts. Anyway, let's move on with the next slide uh, where we talk about uh, complex prompts. It's the same thing. It's, I mean, it's, it's the same thing. You have open prompts, open edit prompts, closed edit prompts and complex prompts, which are um, basically, I mean, you have a complex prompt and then you can have, you can make it even more complex. Um, you will you will get more familiar with this as we go through uh, with some examples in the following lessons. Uh, so open edit prompts, you already know what they are. The only difference is that you are more uh, you get more details, so it's more complex. You can add topic at the beginning of the prompt. You can add information about yourself. You can add uh, let's say. Um, a detail or a condition which might shape the uh, output, the outcome. Uh, it's the same thing, only more details. We will show. I will show you some examples uh, in the following lesson. Close and it prompts the same thing, only that there is yes or no answer. Only that. Um, so, for example, a closed but also complex prompt uh, could be. Can humans breathe underwater uh, without a tank oxygen for more than six minutes? Right. So this is a closed and a prompt. It, it, it. I mean, ChatGPT has to provide you with a fact, yes or no, yes or no. It doesn't have a lot of creative freedom, but it's more detailed, so we can consider it a complex prompt. And then there is complex, complex prompts. These are really detailed, uh, but you should avoid them. This might seem uh, counterintuitive, but you should avoid the complex, complex prompts. It's better to not get into them because they are worse than these two. These are uh, great. These are the best two. So, I mean, in general, I always tend to recommend using only open-ended and complex prompts. That's it. You don't need anything else. Um, there might be some exceptions, but most of the time, if you need some information, you don't need a closed edit prompt. You can ask ChatGPT to give you an open edit prompt. I mean, most of the time, this is the gold. This is where all the gold lays. So we will try to learn how to master open-ended prompts mostly because the rest of them, you don't need them that much. And um, as I said, it's, it might sound counterintuitive, but, but I'll, I'll explain to you why you should never use complex, complex prompts. Uh, and, um, you know, that's pretty much with the, the main types of prompts. 
And the key to understanding prompts to, is to analyze the type of prompt given. And this is what we will do in the following lessons. We will go ahead in ChatGPT and we will start crafting prompts. So let's end with the slides. I don't like slides. Probably you don't like them too. I needed them to get you started into the topic we're discussing right here. I will close the slides and I, I hopefully I will not open it again until the end of this uh, course because I'm all about uh, examples. So as I said, let's get into examples. Um, so I will start with a simple and open ended prompt. All right. Uh, let me see what can I do here. So um, our open ended simple prompt will look something like this. Uh, can you tell me so or just tell me um, a trivial fact uh, about something few people know about. Let's hit enter. Did you know that honey never spoils? Archaeologists have discovered pots of honey in ancient Egyptian tombs that are over 3000 years old and it is still edible. Huh, interesting. <clears throat> so this is an example of a simple and open ended prompt. It allowed ChatGPT to, provi to provide me with an example it wanted. Uh, let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT for something else. This time we will use a closed ended simple prompt. Um, what is the capital of France? I will hit enter and I will get this answer. The capital of France is Paris. So I got this answer from this closed uh, ended simple prompt. Sometimes ChatGPT might provide you with more information than you actually ask for. That's okay, but this is still a closed ended simple prompt because it's it doesn't have details that would change the outcome too much. Or I mean, first of all, this is a closed prompt because it's a fact that the capital of France is Paris, and ChatGPT doesn't have much. Uh, creative freedom here and about here it's also a simple prompt because it doesn't have many details now that's it not too much to talk about here this is it for crafting simple prompts uh, um, let's start with a complex prompt that is uh, open-ended all right so in the last example the uh, last time we had this prompt in the past lesson where we have asked ChatGPT for a trivial fact. Let's let's do the same thing. So provide me with a trivial fact that few people know about. This is a sim is this is still a simple prompt. It is open ended, but how do we make it complex? Well, it's simple. We add details. Only one detail that um, can change the whole outcome uh, can make this prompt complex. So the detail I will add is the following topic. And I will say that the topic is astronomy. Uh, and if I hit enter, I will get something else. Astronomy fact, the dwarf planet Haumea located in the Kuiper belt has such a rapid rotation that a day on its surface lasts only about 3.9 Earth hours. These extreme rotations causes Haumea to be shaped like an elongated ellipsoid, making it one of the most uniquely shaped objects in our solar system. Interesting fact. So, um, here we have a open-ended complex prompt. By adding this detail, we made it a complex prompt. Now you can make it very complex by making it by adding more details. Uh, but as I told you about the complex complex prompts, um, we'll go into them a bit later. Uh, and why you should not use complex complex prompts? So very complex prompts. Uh, you'll realize why a bit later. Right now it might seem, uh, you know, counterintuitive or even stupid. So 
don't focus on that let's move on we have um, the open ended complex prompt let's go ahead with the closed ended complex prompt and so in the last example with the simple prompt i show i showed you how um a closed prompt was ha has given me the answer that paris is the capital of france now <clears throat> let's type that same prompt again what is the capital of france but this time i will make a change all right so if i, if I think about this i have an idea a new idea is the capital of france paris london or uh let's say berlin so um this is a closed ended prompt that is complex because i also add conditions here basically i give options to ChatGPT. i don't only ask ChatGPT the question i also give ChatGPT some options to choose from so i go even further to limiting its ability to be creative i mean of course it will not be creative in this case but by giving ChatGPT options you go even further further and you can consider this um complex close ended prompt and let's hit enter and we will get the following answer the capital of france is paris and that's it i mean easy as that now i hope this this examples helped you understand more clearly um uh, the difference between complex and simple prompts and the difference between close ended and open ended prompts uh, because we will mostly use um, complex open-ended prompts since they're the most uh, useful in most cases. But it depends. There are some uh, exceptions. I always tend to use open-ended complex prompts. Uh, maybe because it's what I tend to use ChatGPT for the most. If I had a different, if I was in a different industry, maybe it wasn't this case. But I don't think so. Uh, honestly, most people I know tend to use as well complex and open-ended prompts um and they're the hardest to harness they're the hardest to learn how to create because they're the most complex right so um this is it pretty much with this lesson i hope you found it helpful and interesting see you in the next one